Hey everybody, welcome back to the K2N Online Battle School. We are back here on YouTube and today we're talking about hitting very clean switches in the Outrigger Canoe. The skills that we're gonna talk about today are applicable in any single blade paddling technique in where you have to switch from side to side. Switching is not one of the most glamorous aspects of the paddle stroke. We like to fixate on how the blade enters the water and how we're engaging during the power phase, the things that are really moving the boat. That being said, effective switches is one of the most important aspects in maintaining boat glide. Often we see paddlers that have very slow and not so deliberate switches and you can see their boat speed drop every time. This becomes a major issue in long distance race. If the boat slows down every single time that you switch, there are thousands of opportunities where you're losing your boat speed. When you're racing against other competitors that are very meticulous on how they're hitting their switches, these are the small differences that change your race results. Having very clean and efficient switches comes from practice and understanding the mechanics, both of what you're doing with your hands and how your paddle is functioning. Taking the time to practice this on land will make you more effective in switching when you're out on the water. The overall goal is we want the overall switching speed to be the same as we're taking a recovery on the same side. So whatever time delay there is, from exiting the water to catching, we want that to be the same amount of time as we switch to the other side and take the paddle stroke. If there is a delay between that crossover, the boat slows down and the next few strokes, you have to regain the glide that you've already worked so hard to get. The first major tip that we're gonna talk about is initiating the switch early. When paddlers are struggling with clean and efficient switches, when you look at them, they almost look surprised that they have to fumble the paddle and they don't take the time to kind of set up exactly what they wanna do when they wanna do it. When you're paddling in an OC1, you are in full control of when you take your switches. Use this to your advantage. Know preemptively in the next few strokes that you wanna hit your switch, and this gives you the time to start very early on that switch process. What I mean by starting early is once the blade is behind you and exits the water, you wanna begin the two hands switching as the paddle is behind you and making its way forward. Too often do we see paddlers get both hands in front of them and try to switch in front. At this point, it is too late. Starting the switch process before the blade passes your body gives you plenty of time to make that transition. The transition goes from the top hand coming off of the handle and receiving the paddle in the new bottom hand position. As you can see here, I have both hands open in the scenario. This way I can take the receiving hand and place it in the same spot. If I hold a death grip with my old bottom hand and I grab with my opposite hand, I'm either gonna go too high or too low. I need to be in the same spot so both hands have to open and clap each other to get that spot. Remaining in contact with the paddle is crucial to making sure that you get to the top of the T-grip handle without any issues. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my bottom hand up to the top. Keeping this hand open, my thumb is gonna catch on the top of the T-grip like so. The reason that we don't wanna remove that hand and take it off like so is as I'm taking the paddle strokes and looking down at the water, I can't see my T-grip. So it becomes a game of luck to make sure that I grab it. By remaining in contact, I can always slide to the top and get to that ideal position each time to the point that I can have my eyes closed and get there each time. If I do switch my hands and close my eyes, I might not be able to grab this efficiently, right? Don't make it a roulette in trying to luck out on grabbing the handle. Sliding up to the top is the most ideal way to the top. So again, starting that switch process early two hands receive, slide to the top, and now you're in position to take a stroke very quickly with a very high percentage success rate. As I demonstrated earlier in the video here, if you understand where your hands are going and feeling what is necessary to make that switch faster, you can literally throw the paddle and get into that position a little bit faster. 
The problem with this is you can literally throw the paddle out of your hands. So the success rate doesn't go from 100%, it drops down a small percentage, but if you are in control of the paddle, you can make that extra speed work to your advantage to switching quicker. Now your switches are faster than your typical recovery, which now allows you to keep elevating the boat speed every switch. In our Outrigger Canoe Paddle Guide, we talk about the swing weight of the blade. So having a heavier blade plays a major advantage in swing weight, especially when you are switching from side to side. When throwing the paddle, you are engaging the swing weight each time as the paddle feels that pendulum going to the front. The heavier the blade is here, the easier the swing weight will take the paddle into the position that you want. Practicing throwing the paddle starts as simple as this, having the bottom hand throwing into the top hand position like so. All we're looking to do is to flick the blade in front of us and allow the paddle to swing away from us, staying in minimal contact with the paddle until I catch the T-grip at the top. From this position, the paddle is oriented ideally for my bottom hand to extend out and begin a paddle stroke. Knowing that I want my hand to receive the paddle here, I can try to throw my paddle into that position. Both of these things happening at once will look something like that. Having the bottom hand there to brace and grab the paddle allows me to open my top hand and receive with the proper grip on the top handle. Even a quick switch in a position like this for a stroke is enough to maintain boat speed as opposed to missing a stroke entirely. Ideally, you do want to open this hand as you get to the top like so. Part of the magic on that is understanding preemptively where the paddle is going to end up. By practicing throwing it, I know that I can get my paddle in a position here and I just need to extend my arm out to receive like so. Knowing that the process is gonna happen, I can start that very early. Knowing preemptively where it's gonna end up, I can place my hands where they need to be, like so. The faster you throw the paddle, the quicker you can make that switch process. But again, it is very easy to throw your paddle into the air or off on the water. So you don't want to save one hundredth of a second and lose your paddle in the process. So being very aggressive with it sometimes pays off, but depending on the situation that you're in, sometimes it's better just to use the swing weight to get the paddle where you want it, as opposed to really throwing it each time. Practicing this on land, preferably out in a yard. So if you do throw your paddle, it just lands safely in the grass and you can just sit and just go back and forth, take the stroke, start it early, going back and forth. Starting simple with the two hands sliding up to the top, two hands sliding to the top, two hands sliding to the top. And eventually you'll know where the paddle is gonna end up each time and you can begin kind of cutting that corner and throwing the paddle into position and having your hands there to receive. If you're paddling in an OC6 and you're switching your legs each time, this is another variable that you can incorporate in as well. excellent drill that you can bring to the water is simply taking a few strokes on one side and then switching, ultimately culminating to one stroke per side. If you can make a boat move fast by taking one stroke per side, it means that you have a mastery of your switches that is not hindering the boat speed. This is our overall goal, is we want our switches to be just as fast as recovery. So if you're taking one stroke on each side with lightning fast switches, the boat speed should increase very similar to taking strokes only on one side. Primary thing is making sure that when you do switch that your hands and body are in position to take a competent stroke. If you're fumbling the paddle each time, you'll never find boat speed properly. Making sure that everything is set up to take a full stroke as you're going through, this is ideal in maintaining that boat speed each time. So in review, start the switch early, receive hand to hand, slide to the top, or use the swing weight to your advantage and throw it preemptively knowing where the hands will end up.
keep practicing until you master this concept where the switches are just as fast as the recovery. It is simple to look at paddlers warming up and understand their overall skill level based on how they are switching. Paddlers that do not spend the time and the attention to detail working on their switches are always hindered in their overall boat speed potential. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Again, if you are interested in 200 plus paddle related videos just like this in more detail, K2NOnlinePaddleSchool.com has all the info that you need. It's only $30 a month. It gets you access to everything, a coach to answer all your questions and other resources at your fingertips to make sure that you are getting better with your paddling this season. Don't rely on goofy shaped paddles to try and teach you. Take the time and effort to get yourself a coach. Signing up for the online school for an entire year is less money than one stick of carbon that's not gonna teach you anything except bad habits. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next week here for another quick tip.